The world we live in is filled with signals. Wi-Fi, radio, telephone. But what exactly is a signal? A signal is a set of data or information that varies over time, space, or both. For example, audio is a signal that varies over time. An image is a signal that varies over space. And a video, like this one, is a signal that varies over time and space. Today, we'll focus on biomedical signals, which are a function of time. More specifically, we'll be looking at the electrocardiogram, or the ECG. An ECG is a recording of the heart's electrical activity, which can be collected using three electrodes or leads, which are stuck to the skin using small patches. ECG leads can be placed in a variety of ways to reveal a different perspective of the heart's electrical activity. Different people can have different shapes for different lead placements, but generally the ECG looks something like this with each of the peaks representing a different event in the cardiac cycle, such as atrial or ventricular depolarization. Deviations from the shape can be used to help diagnose conditions such as arrhythmias, but this relies on a high quality signal, which can be difficult to get when noise and other artifacts from motion, breathing, muscle movement interfere and degrade the quality of a signal. For example, looking at this ECG trace we collected in lab, it would immediately present a few challenges to analyze. For example, there's a lack of consistent baseline, there's a jittery nature, and overall there's limited distinction of the peaks. As such, we need a way to selectively filter out the components of the signal we want from those we don't. To understand how we can do this, we first need to understand the Fourier transform, which takes a signal in the time domain and converts it to a signal in the frequency domain. You can think about this as kind of breaking a Lego set into its individual pieces. And once we do that, we can devise filters to remove the pieces we don't want and then rebuild the signal. When we take the Fourier transform of our signal, we get a graph that looks like this. We can see that our signal is largely composed of frequencies less than 100 Hertz. Since breathing rate is slower than heart rate, this is concentrated at the lower range of frequencies, less than 1 Hertz. We can also see a peak at 60 Hertz, which corresponds to electrical noise. Filters can be designed to attenuate these undesirable frequencies and pass or amplify the desirable ones. There are four primary types of filters, high pass, low pass, band pass, and notch filters. Each of these filters can be plotted on response curves with frequency in radians per second on the x-axis and attenuation or gain in decibels on the y-axis. If we look at the low pass response filter curve, we can see that below the cutoff frequency, there is little to no attenuation of the signal. This is referred to as the pass band. Above the cutoff frequency in the stop band, there is much larger signal attenuation, as indicated by the negative gain. The cutoff frequency is also referred to as the negative 3 dB frequency, because this is how much attenuation is experienced at this frequency. This corresponds to about 70% of the signal being passed. As a result, it is often useful to expand the pass band to prevent your desired signal from being attenuated. To isolate our ECG signal from the noise, I designed a digital band pass filter that cuts out the low frequencies that contribute to the baseline wonder and the high frequencies which contribute to the jittery nature of the curve. So if we run this section of code, We can get our filtered output ECG signal. We can immediately see a much smoother baseline. And if we zoom in, we can see much clearer peak detection. There is truly so much more that can be learned about the world of signals and signal processing. And these techniques can be applied in fields like telecommunications, image processing, audio engineering, and so much more. So whether you're interested in the math or the biology of it all, I encourage you to read further. But for now, thanks for tuning in to my intro to signal processing.